Let's find the intrinsic value of AZN, AstraZeneca. Now, some people are talking about this company during the whole COVID epidemic, and it might have a big pop. So let's, their market cap is 146.9 billion. Hundred and forty seven billion and the stock price is fifty five thirty eight. So that means they have about two point seven billion shares outstanding. So when we find out the intrinsic value of the company, the future free cash flows, we have to discount it back and divide that number by the number of shares outstanding to see our stock price. And this is just one way to find the value of a company there are many ways but this i feel is probably the best way because it you're looking at actual cash so you're not um when you look at net income or earnings those numbers sometimes aren't as accurate because they do a lot of tax things to it like depreciation write-offs things like that but cash flow is really a great indicator because it's actual cash it could be lumpy though that's the thing with cash flow you have to remember companies sometimes have years where they invest a lot of money in their business especially in the first few years so sometimes cash flow could actually be negative so you see in this case astrazeneca in 2019 had a big drop down to half a billion free cash flow and they were at two billion in 2016 and 17. Also, net income dropped a lot, too, in 2019. That's something I would look at a little closer, read through the 10K to try to figure out why. Revenue is the, the smoothest number from year to year because there's really not much you can manipulate it on cash flow. And... Um, and as you can see, it ranges from 22 to $24 billion a year. So obviously it's a big company. Um, we got the uh, future free cash flow using this information. Now we need to figure out the discount rate by, by looking at the, the interest they pay on their bonds and the interest, the cost of the debt. So they pay $833 million of interest expense on the income statement. Now let's see how much debt they have. And current liabilities, current debt is debt due within one year. And that's $1.8 billion. Long term tends to be a lot higher. And that's $15 billion. Always make sure you pull in the right numbers. If you do this too fast, you might make a mistake. So they pay roughly 4.75% interest on their debt, which looks about right. Now, th that's not actually the cost of the debt. The cost of the debt is 4.75% times 1 minus the effective tax rate because they do get a tax write-off on the interest paid. So let's, let's find the income before tax on the income statement. And you can, you can go through the 10K. I used to go through the 10K for this. And it is a headache sometimes trying to find information. It's so much easier on Yahoo Finance. Twenty one percent. That's pretty much in line with, with what I would expect their effective tax rate to be. So their cost on debt is 3.76%. Now the cost of equity, which is always more expensive than debt. Wow, that's a really low beta. That's the lowest I've ever seen. And I think I, the last video I said the same thing until this video now. 0.31%. Um, that's a really, really low volatility stock. So a, a beta of one means your stock moves with the market. A beta of two means it moves twice as much as the market. In this case, 
AstraZeneca moves 30% of the, what the market moves. So if it goes up 100, they only go up 30. And if it goes down 100, they only go down 30. So it's really low volatility. That's interesting. And um, so we got a whack. This is the lowest whack I've ever seen. 4.6%. It's a blended um, whack. You're blending the cost of debt and the cost of equity. And we have the weight of the equity and debt up here to figure that out. And it's 4.6%. Now we have to discount the future cash flows by the 4.6%. So we estimated the future cash flows and we do a terminal value after year four. And it's similar to the Gordon growth model. If you want to Google that term, that's pretty much how you figure out the terminal value. And you discount those numbers by the appropriate discount rate. And this is your the value of your company in today's dollars. So the company, according to the dis discount cash flow model, is worth $68 billion. At 2.7 billion shares, its stock price is $25. So it's tr trading at a pretty aggressive premium, more than double it's trading at. It's trading at $55 and we calculate $25. So just, just for um, laughs, let's look at the um, historical stock price. So if we're saying 25, so it was trading at intrinsic value for a few years, a little, a little bit of premium, but, and then it, with COVID, there was a big drop. Everybody, every stock dropped dramatically, but their stock, their stock has been on a bull rally up to its highest ever at 55.41. So you're paying a premium because of the expectation of the future. Because you don't always pay for stocks on what they did in the past. You have to, you sometimes pay for what they do in the future, which is a hard concept for people to understand. Because why am I paying for something that didn't happen? Because if the company blows up even bigger, then you could have a really nice return. So that's the discounted cash flow model for AZN. Please leave a comment if you want me to do a, 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 an intrinsic value model for any other company. Thanks for watching.